we have a pendulum. The pendulum, swinging back and forth, looks like this. It has a length L, and we are trying to figure out, uh, we're going to prove that this is in simple harmonic motion, we're going to figure out the angular velocity, we're going to figure out the period of this pendulum. Goal is to figure, prove it's in simple harmonic motion and figure out the period of the pendulum. Where do we start, Zach? You know that simple harmonic motion is the second derivative of position. Yeah, second derivative of position equals negative squared. Negative, just make sure you remember the negative. Okay, that's what we're trying to get to. Agreed. Sometimes it's good to know where you're trying to end. We have to know where to start in order to get to that. Oh, it's just, as long as we're talking about free body diagrams, I'm going to draw the force of gravity tangential to the motion, and I'm going to draw the force of gravity, what I'm going to call out. What's wrong with drawing that as an answer to a question on the AP test? Ah, it's not that it's not right. It is right, but it would not be a right answer on the AP test because, Sierra, just reminding you, anytime you are drawing a free body diagram as an answer on the test, do not break it into components. If you are going to work with that free body diagram and you want to break it into components, draw a new one. Just reminding you. Please. All right. So we have, this is our angle theta. Um, let's, if we're going to do this, let's sum the forces in the tangential direction. We're going to have the force of gravity tangential equals mass times the tangential acceleration. Force of gravity tangential. Notice that the force of gravity tangential, if I were to draw this out, it would be, draw it right here, it would be straight down. The force of gravity would be straight down. This would be the force of gravity tangential. This would be the force of gravity out. Notice this is theta, which means this is theta right there which means that the force of gravity tangential is equal to mg times class sine or cosine of theta. Sine, right, because this is the, the angle here, so times the sine of theta. So then we can get that the net force tangential is equal to mg sine theta, which is equal to, um, and notice that's in the negative direction, so we should have a negative there. We should have negative mg sine theta is equal to mass times now. The tangential acceleration, right, moving in a circle, you should remember is what relative to the arc? The tangential acceleration, we actually just went through this today, right? The second derivative of the arc length with, oops, the second derivative of the arc length with respect to time. Sarah? Why, why do we have tension? Ah, well, let me answer that in a question in just a second here. The question is why don't we have ten, uh, tension in our free body diagram? Truth? Yes, go ahead. Actually, it, it, regardless, there, sh there should be tension at this particular point. Uh, the truth of the matter is all I did was draw the force of gravity breaking its components. We should have tension in our free body diagram. You are absolutely correct. It doesn't matter as far as some of the forces in the tangential direction, which is why I kind of overlooked it. But yes, in our free body diagram, we should have tension. But again, some of the forces in the tangential direction isn't going to affect that. Okay, so we now have negative g sine theta equals the second derivative of um, arc length as a function of time from here. We even know where we're headed.
nodes. Uh, you know that R point equals R theta, which in this case would be L theta. So we know S equals L times theta in this particular case. I agree. So um, if we take a second derivative of both sides, then the L is constant. Okay, let's plug that in. We can now say that the second derivative of, of arc length as a function of time is equal to L times the second derivative of theta as a function of time. Okay, we have the second derivative. So let's then rearrange it because we know we need the second derivative of, it was x in our equation, but that's for simple harmonic motion. This time, we're actually talking about theta rather than x. So we know on the left-hand side, we're going to want the second derivative of theta as a function of time. That's equal to, let's see, negative g over l times the sine of theta. I feel close. Now, we're not sitting, we're standing, see? Hard to fall asleep while standing. Thank you. Let's switch to a comfy chair, that's not gonna help. Eric. Can you just like use your memorized like angular frequency? <coughs> like you, uh, the answer to the question is, unless they ask you to derive it, yes. But I'm assuming we're deriving. That's right. We're close. Hold on. Well, we can use any equation on our equation sheet, right? Uh, not well. We have to okay. derive the. Oh, right. I guess no. You you would not be deriving it from the period equation. That's what you're saying. If you use the small angle. The small angle approximation, which is? That sine of theta equals theta. Sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. It's called the small angle approximation. Remember, if you're talking in terms of radians, the sine of theta is approximately equal to theta for angles that are less than class? 50 degrees. Sure. Pick an angle 10, 15 degrees. Remember, it's really, uh, it's only true with really, really, well, actually, actually never true that these are equal unless theta is equal to zero. So um, it's, we basically decided that somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees, the uh, error associated with that is negligible. Therefore, with the small angle approximation, we can say the second derivative of theta as a function of time is equal to negative g over L times theta. Therefore, omega nick is equal to square root of g over l, because omega squared is equal to g over l. Therefore, we can figure out that the period Travis half, huh? We can figure out, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's equal to uh, change of theta over change of pi. Keep going. Equal to 2 pi over the period. Therefore, the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of l over g. Great.